you know, there was a fascinating piece earlier this week in the Atlantic magazine uh, by Derek Thompson talking about the end of what he calls the millennial consumer subsidy, that uh, the idea that you could just, uh, and he talks about the just in time, I can uh, tap away on my phone and everything from food to furniture shows up in an instant uh, and to say, well, prices are going up. Uh, it's not as cheap to do this anymore. There are supply chain disruptions. What do you see the impact from the from the shipping side of all of this on standards of living, on what people have grown to, people have uh, grown accustomed to over the last number of years and the pandemic accelerated this with people staying at home and ordering in for uh, delivery of all sorts of uh, goods and services. Um, what do you see with these as Tatiana asked, with the higher premiums and, and choke points, uh, does this mean we're going to see uh, a bit of ratcheting back on, on standards of living, uh, in, in indust particularly in the industrialized countries? The, uh, the, the cost of living for everyone is, uh, is definitely rapidly going up uh, right now. Uh, but, in, but in terms of going back to, uh, to the comfort of ordering everything and, and getting it at your doorstep uh, only a few days uh, from now, there is no going back on that. Uh, but I think what this uh, this uh, supply chain crisis and also the reason uh, the uh, the reason inflation uh, is is also telling people that, that things are not necessarily always that cheap. Uh, and I think also if we are going to put uh, say a little bit more perspective on this uh, and, and put in perhaps a little bit of, of climate change and uh, and that uh, say massive challenge also that uh, that is around us, uh, if 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 consumers are are serious about uh, say having carbon footprint uh, labels on on each product, uh, then they also need to act or, or, and, and to walk the talk uh, when they do so. And, and, and it comes with the cost, uh, all this, uh, this ease of, uh, of uh, consumerism uh, that, uh, that is, uh, has also been everywhere uh, seen over the past two years. Uh, and, and, and you will never go back to that. Once you, uh, once you see uh, the, the, the uh, say, how things have moved on um, it will become stay more complex going forward it will become more hybrid and i guess that's also if i may uh, also uh, say bring this back to to the world of, of, of global liner shipping because global liners have also made windfall profits to the extent of several hundred billions of dollars and they are to spend these money wisely and and, uh, and a way that they could do this is of course not only to to bring up higher standard, higher services for for what they deliver to to global shippers, uh, but they are also investing in door to door logistics right now, uh, more so than they have ever done before because they have just spent one decade losing money and and focusing on port to port. Now they want to do things differently. They want to fly more stuff around. They want to uh, to bring it from uh, from production side into to your doorstep. Uh, so I think we are uh, we're we're seeing not a bullet train uh, continuing in that regard, but we definitely see changes that that we will not say uh, unwind or rewind uh, due to the obstacles that we that we tend to see right now. That's how I see it at least. Yeah, I've been reading a lot about the the changes in um, the the supply chain of the shipping industry itself. So that so that to your point, door to door, um, also getting into other areas. A lot I've been reading a lot about real estate, right? Because a lot of the ports uh, can't contain all these container ships. There's still backlog, so people are buying up real estate around port areas, kind of changing the landscape of what these areas look like, which I find um, fascinating. So so they're going from just owning you know a tank or you know. A, uh, containers to owning real estate and owning, you know, and moving and, and, you know, that entails a whole host of dealing with other government regulatory agencies and, you know, rules, et cetera. Um, and, you know, so what other changes on, a, on this kind of macro industry scale have you seen um, since we spoke over the last 12 months? Because I think these changes are really going to impact uh, us at home too, from everything from jobs, you know, to, to real estate, you know, prices, um, you know, what have you seen more on that? Uh, what we have seen is, is, is definitely a, a global interest uh, in investing and in real estate that, that also comes in the form of, uh, of a terminal uh, 
logistics uh, facilities in in Africa. We have seen the uh, the European carrier, uh, well, the world's largest, if uh, if you if you measure it right now, uh, MSC. Uh, just uh, buying uh, Bolares uh, African logistics uh, facilities, uh, so so they are they they're buying real estate. They are also buying uh, assets in form of uh, uh, of, of uh, not only uh, say cargo uh, carriers, uh, freighters. Uh, we also seen the French CMA CTM uh, supporting, I guess, some some political initiatives, uh, buying a huge stake in, in Air France and now getting all the way up to, I think, 9.7%. Uh, so, uh, so do not underestimate the power uh, of, say, national politics as well as geopolitics in, in, in this whole uh, sense, uh, because Merskline also, one of the bigger carriers, of course, have also made investments uh, in in US. Uh, they have made investments also in, in the Far East uh, for, for logistics uh, companies uh, trying to, uh, to be this this integrator of, uh, of supply chains. And, and without doubt, uh, one of the things that, uh, that, uh, that, that we at, at Senator definitely expect will, will come out of this uh, su- supply chain crunch right now is even more complex supply chains going forward when, when people uh, set up what we could uh, term China plus one, mm. just in uh, time supply chain, adding a just in case supply chain which, uh, which may be uh, also set up somewhere in the Far East. I think that's, that's the dominant strategy in my eyes. Uh, but it may also be the fact that, uh, that some, if they can set up a, a fully automated facility in the, in the heart of Europe or in the heart of the US for that matter, uh, that may also be the case because labor cost at the end of the day also for, for products like this is, uh, is, is essential. Uh, so, so the name of the game is uh, supply chain resilience and, uh, and, uh, and global Carriers is, is definitely trying to sell peace of mind to whomever is ready to buy that uh, at, at just the right price going forward uh, to, to, to also make sure that, uh, that they are uh, the essential service provider going forward. And in the end, at the benefit of, of all of us uh, global consumers, wherever we may find ourselves. Mm-hmm.